We are deepening the war in the Gaza Strip. We will continue to fight until the complete victory over Hamas. This is the only way to return our abductees, eliminate Hamas, and ensure that Gaza will no longer be a threat to Israel. It will take time, but we are united. The fighters, the people, and the government. We are united and determined to fight to the end. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, talking about the fight ahead that may take some time. It is our time for Common Ground. It's a segment we bring Democrats and Republicans together. Joining us tonight, Florida Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz and Ohio Republican Congressman Max Miller. Uh, thank you both for being here. I know you have a common ground on this issue, supporting Israel, and you've done a number of different things legislatively together. Uh, Congressman Moskowitz, I guess in the wake of how long this is taking, how difficult the fighting is for Israel, do you think the Democratic Party has seen a significant split here in support for Israel? And where do you think it's going? Well, thanks, Brad. Thanks for having us. So, I mean, look, the reason why it's taking a while is because the world, the United States, along with Israel, is saying, be strategic. Try to save as many civilians as possible, even while Hamas uses them as a human shield. And so that's why it's taking a while, because even though the criticism that Israel is receiving is unfair and sometimes borderline anti-Semitic, they are being more strategic than any nation when they prosecute a war. So that's why it's taking a while, not to mention that Hamas continues to move the hostages around. And again, remind your viewers that if Hamas would just surrender, this war uh, would be over. You know, look, there is a split uh, within the party, but I would I would like to point out that I think in Congress it's small. You've seen dramatic bipartisan support for Israel and significant amount of Democrats, right? There's 214 uh, of us uh, in Congress uh, and, you know, there's uh, a dozen or so and some more join them from time to time. But the overwhelming majority of Democrats, along uh, with uh, my colleagues across the aisle, support Israel. If you look at the bill, Israel's right to exist, there was only one no vote uh, in that in Congress. Yeah, you're right. Uh, here is Congresswoman Madeline Dean, a Democrat from Pennsylvania, on her conversation with Prime Minister Netanyahu. Take a listen. I said... Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, you recognize that as you showed us these videos, the world will watch the other videos of Gaza. And dead children is absolutely unacceptable. The level of innocent loss of life is unacceptable. And he tried to say to me, but there's a difference, there's a difference. I said one difference is that it appears that Hamas took joy in the killing. I certainly hope you take no joy in the killing. Congressman Miller, she's talking about the videos from October 7th, obviously. And she is. And, and my colleague from across the aisle, Madeline Dean, I, I have a great amount of respect for her. And I believe I've taken two codels with her overseas. I, I respectfully disagree. Israel needs to be given the latitude. And look, no one wants to see innocent lives lost. I don't want to see any guys in innocent lives lost or Israelis. But at the end of the day, what Hamas did they started this war. They have ended the previous ceasefire, as my colleague Jared just said, and then they just re rejected another one that's being trying to, you know, coalesce around the Arab world. That that is a deal that wouldn't, you know, satiate me or I believe the American people keeping the Palestinian Authority in charge. But I respectfully disagree with her comments. What Israel is doing right now, to be clear, uh, I'm a United States Marine. I have never seen warfare since Vietnam, and I wasn't even born that has a tunnel system that goes hundreds of feet down. And these tunnels, they're a spider web. And now you have Gazan civilians who are in the streets fighting for humanitarian aid so that Hamas doesn't continue to use it to build the tunnels to kill Israeli civilians on an everyday basis. The Gazan people want to be free. But make no mistake, this ideology of Gazan civilians crossing over to commit these atrocities also has to be known to the American people. It wasn't just Hamas who participated in these attacks. It was thousands of Palestinian civilians, and it could have been my neighbors here where I live in my home, that just saw bloodlust, picked up a weapon, and started taking Jewish people and other people as hostages and selling them off. Uh, so I respectfully disagree, but I, I do respect her greatly. In the meantime, uh, Congressman Moskowitz, we're 
under attack ourselves. The U.S. troops in the region are getting attacked. In Iraq, uh, we had troops wounded by Hezbollah attack uh, in a specific place in the Erbil Air Base uh, up in the north. And that is about number 102 uh, as far as attacks. Uh, just today, this morning, there was um, an effort uh, by the USS Lamboon FAA teens from the Eisenhower Carrier Strike Group uh, shot down 12 one-way attack drones uh, that were and three anti-ship ballistic missiles, two land attack cruise missiles. This is all coming from CENTCOM uh, and happening today. These attacks are coming fast and furious. Is the administration uh, responding adequately to be able to send the message that this has to stop? Well, look, I, I think the president, uh, the administration, and the United States made the right decision when we sent uh, the battle cruisers in, the aircraft carriers into the region, uh, and the nuclear submarines to not only make sure that Israel knows we're supporting them and we're living up to that commitment, but that the world understands that we will use the full force of the United States uh, military in the event that uh, this war were to widen beyond Hamas. I think that worked. I think the president did a good job keeping... Iran. This was Iran's moment. This was Hezbollah's moment to really take advantage. And I think the pressure from the United States stopped that. Now, with that being said, there are no doubt that the, some of the proxies are testing some of the limits here. Uh, I do think the administration uh, should balance. I think they should respond forcefully, but make sure, obviously, they don't give opportunity uh, for someone to take advantage and widen the war. So I would like to see the administration respond forcefully. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we want to make sure that we keep the balance here and that this war doesn't widen so that Israel can focus on Hamas. And so far, uh, that, that seems to be working. We have many more months to go, Brett, I believe, uh, yeah. in this war. As Max talked about, the tunnel system, we have the hostages, uh, and then obviously we have the folks, uh, the leaders uh, of Hamas that are still in the region that we have, we have not found. And so this is going to take a while, and then obviously there's going to be time thereafter to figure out you know, what happens uh, with the remainder of Gaza and the West Bank and the Arab world, what, what will happen when Hamas's military capabilities are completely destroyed? So I know you both share the common ground of trying to get funding uh, for Israel at this time. It's It's been tough in Congress uh, to herd the cats around that supplemental bill that includes not only Israel, but border security and, and also Ukrainian funding. Congressman Miller, do you think it's going to happen? I sure hope it does, Brett. I mean, through right now and from what we see uh, just being in the House, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Uh, Mitch McConnell, Leader McConnell, and the two Democrats he has right now in the Senate is all of our negotiating power. And as long as Leader McConnell can stand strong and get some H.R. 2 provisions in, I believe the supplemental will hit the floor. And I haven't been super quiet or cute about how I feel about the IRS cuts when it came to the Israel supplemental and I want to make something clear. I still stand by those comments. I thought it was reckless, but we need to help our allies. We also need to help ourselves. You know, we have 70,000 Americans dying of a fentanyl overdose every single year. We have children who are being human trafficked. And I can go on and on and on, as you have seen, and it's been on Fox all day, the crisis at the southern border. So these are all things that we need to focus on. It's my hope that the supplemental will be brought to the floor and that we see real leadership out of our party that can go ahead and get this done while helping the American people and the vital problem that we face and the national security issue that we face while letting in all of these individuals at our border. And as I believe the American people know, and if you don't know, you know, we don't stop every individual uh, who comes through that border who's a nefarious entity that may want to do something bad uh, to Americans. As you see, Brett, and I'll, I'll end it right yeah. here, but in the clip you played beforehand, you saw a gentleman not only grab an Israeli flag, he grabbed an American flag and he started stomping on it in the streets. These people, what they want is they want total global domination. But we have to help our allies because at the end of the day, we need our allies to help us later on in the future. Well, Congressman, we appreciate your time uh, during this holiday week. Uh, thanks for coming on Common Ground. Thank you, thanks, Brad. Brad.